Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're the social justice team for this year's cohort, and we're excited to present to you our initiative entitled Ready Access Reentry Services for Decarcerated Populations. Uh, the purpose of our initiative is to shine a spotlight on California libraries, but also to help a marginalized population of decarcerated individuals. That includes people who were previously imprisoned in prison, jail, or juvenile hall. But we're also proud to have um, resources for those who are impacted by um, incarceration, and that includes the friends, families, and community. So to get started, we're gonna tell you a bit about ourselves, why we're qualified to create such a toolkit, and our why. So I'll start. I'm Akila Manuel Mills. I currently chair the Homelessness Resource Committee for the Riverside County Library System. And many of the people that we serve are decarcerated. Um, prior to that, I was a social worker in Skid Row, LA for five years. And again, many of those people are decarcerated for different reasons at different periods of time. Prior to that, I was a Riverside County Sheriff Deputy and part of my tenure was actually working in the jails in custody with people who were incarcerated day to day. So over the last 20 years, I've had the privilege of seeing what the mix of kindness with information literacy and resources, uh, the impact it can have and actually change the trajectory of someone's life. Um, so now we'll hear from Greg. Hello, I am Gregory Mason um, from San Diego, California. I have grown up in inner cities um, dealing with these situations, um, decarceration, incarceration. I've worked with um, children um, dealing with these situations as well over 10 years, whether it was um, schooling, a library, or a recreation center. So I have a, this is near and dear to my heart. Um, but yeah, I, this is one of the things I would love to accomplish. Thanks, Gregory. And Jenny? And Jenny? Sorry, <laughs> muted. My name is Jenny Rogers. I am a member of the Social Justice Services Department at Alameda County Library. We do library programs for the local jail, which is the fifth largest in the country. And we also run libraries at the juvenile hall and its adjacent camp. I got my start on this path five years ago when I worked as a librarian in a state prison. And I went in with um, the beliefs and perspectives I, I continue to have, but it was there that they were fully radicalized and I can't imagine doing any other job than I'm doing now. Thanks, Jenny and Laura. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Mayelian. For 10 years, I was a teen services librarian in the juvenile detention center for King County, <clears throat> for King County Washington. In 2015, I was the recipient of the King County Library Systems Catalyst Award for my library programming, specifically supporting juveniles who were released from detention into an inpatient drug rehab center. Currently, I'm a branch manager with Sonoma County Library. And my motivations are simple. I would like for us to do something radical. I would like for us to actively work to decrease recidivism rates in the state by supporting this marginalized population with the countless library services that we have to offer. Thanks, Laura. So that's our team. Our goals are twofold. Internally, our goal is for 10 California library systems to adopt the toolkit, including putting the rhetoric ready access um, webpage on their website. But ultimately our goal is for Greg and the team uh, to fully endorse us and to back us and invite us to the next California Directors Summit um, where we can help educate, but also we want an audience with every director in California so they can take this back home and um, implement it. We will be distributing the toolkit uh, via CalLIX regardless, so those library systems can self-select and pick us up. The impact this toolkit is going to have is also twofold. The first is on um, California librarians. We want to uh, raise awareness about incarcerated populations, hopefully garner empathy and really um, um, 
empower them and equip them to serve this population. Uh, the impact on decarcerated individuals is they'll become aware of their local library, access the myriad of services that our libraries already provide, and hopefully have a welcoming work, um, well work, I mean, uh, encounter. So the toolkit that um, we've been alluding to is actually an open source website. Um, it is both inward and outward facing. Um, inward for the librarians and outward for people who are impacted by incarceration, which we've already spoke to. All the components are here. The first thing we wanted to do though, prior to people utilizing the components is to understand how to work um, with decarcerated populations. So we've created this uh, brief video. Welcoming decarcerated individuals, what you should know. Ready Access Library Services for Decarcerated Populations is an initiative of the CLA 2021 Leadership Challenge Social Justice Team. The purpose of this video is to garner a broader perspective of the experience of recently decarcerated people, apply the three Bs, which are be patient, be aware, and build your relational collateral. Sweet freedom, or is it? For those who have not experienced imprisonment, reentry might be thought of as the final chapter in a prison sentence, when in reality it's just the start of a hard road and is often more challenging than serving time. While in prison, family ties often diminish, housing is lost, and job prospects seem unattainable with a felony charge. While we aren't responsible for any one patron's choices, the first impression can be a determining factor to whether someone decides to remain in the library and ask for the resources they need or to leave. This is no different with decarcerated individuals. Studies have shown that what a former prisoner does in the first 72 hours after release often determines whether they will wind up back in jail. Incarcerated people usually leave jail with no money and finding employment and housing with a criminal record is especially difficult. While the thought of getting out of jail or prison is a welcomed idea, it can be anxiety producing for many. Here are three B's to keep in mind. Be patient. The average person makes 35,000 decisions per day. The average inmate makes 25 decisions per day. Even the most trivial decisions a typical citizen makes is not an option for a prisoner. Be aware of your perceptions. It's important to realize that just because you are scared of someone does not actually make them scary. Recognize that the narrative you tell about someone else and your perception of that person may not be who they really are. To the best of your ability, approach and treat all patrons with respect and look forward to a positive encounter until proven otherwise. Build relational collateral. Just as you have cultivated relationships with the story time participants, members of your teen advisory board, or the patron you know by name and the projects they're working on, you can build relational collateral with decarcerated individuals. Each person has their own story and unique set of informational needs. Your welcoming demeanor and willingness to direct them to the services your library provides will have them ready to access the library services that will help them improve their quality of life. We hope by watching this video, you understand how critical access to the library can be for a decarcerated individual, especially when first released. We've covered the need to be patient, to be aware of your perception and the importance to check any biases you may hold, and the impact relational collateral has on all patrons. Thank you for offering re-entry services to decarcerated individuals and for participating in Ready Access. So that's the video. There we go. And so the next component of the website is our California fact sheet, which Jenny will speak to. 
We wanted to provide you with a baseline of current statistics on the state. And so I'll go over some of those now that are the most significant for, for this project. California has 39 and a half million residents. It is the most populous state in the country as well as the most diverse. Of its 6 million students, 50% read at grade level and 25% lack basic reading skills. California has the second highest prison population in the country. Within that population, 28% of it is African-American, despite the fact that African-Americans comprise 6% of the state's general population. Latinx community is 41% of the prison population and 39% of the state's general population. Whites are 26% of the prison population, despite the fact that they are 36% of the state's general population. California has 27% of the country's homeless population and formerly incarcerated people are 10 times more likely to experience homelessness. When released, 50% of people are rearrested at some point. Recidivism is reduced dramatically through family and community support and educational and vocational assistance. When libraries work to ensure that their programs and services extend to all members of the community, recidivism can only go way down and people using the library goes way up. Uh, we've created a multifunctional map to further illustrate our project. So within this map, the counties are the baseline and then through the layers at the left, you can see library systems, jails, state prisons, juvenile facilities, fire camps, and federal prisons. So with the libraries, anyone who has been recently released can look within their county and see all the local libraries. They can click on, on any one of these locations and see the physical address as well as the website URL. Also, any library employee who is attempting to find out where the carceral facilities are in their county can look through the other layers, also seeing the physical address and the URL. So the icons for the jail and prisons are bars, and then it goes down through the juvenile facilities, the state prison fire camps, and federal prisons. So we turn now to Akila, who will talk about initiating partnerships. Yes, so we have created a System for initiating partnerships. The first component is the partnership workflow where librarians uh, will start here. First thing they can refer to is back to the map that we created, just based on where they're at, they can click on the nearest carceral institution. Um, whether they're in NorCal or SoCal, they can click on this link and locate their nearest parole office. And then also for probation, we provided a link here where they can, um, locate their county probation department. Both parole officers and probation officers are case managers. So they would be happy to get um, whatever resources they can into their caseload's hand. Once that has started, they locate the agency or carceral institution. We've created a sample script to get them directed to the appropriate person. Um, the average person, let alone librarian, does not know which department to ask for or who to speak to when they're calling a carceral institution. So this just gets the ball rolling, break the ice, and provide some key terms that the person on the other line would, would know how to get them to the right place. Um, once they are directed to the appropriate person, we provided a script, uh, be it by phone or email. And if by email, we have a reminder here to attach the letter and the sample flyer. Speaking of letters, uh, we've provided two letter templates for librarians. One is for government agencies. 
The other one is for non-governmental. Um, all of these can be downloaded and they're um, fillable. So at the top, they'll put in their information, um, the address and zip that they now know, simply change the name of the person or organization. And your um, non-governmentals are your faith-based agencies, your um, nonprofits, and your community partners. And then we also have created a flyer for incarcerated people. Um, these are in English and Spanish. They are created with the carceral institution in mind. So they're half sheets. You'll notice that the ready access branding imaging is consistent throughout. Um, so it's standardized, ready to roll out to the state. But what's pretty cool is that it's um, customizable. So the library, the local branch, can put five programs here that are specific to them that they can offer. That way, when the person has a flyer in their hand, they know exactly what they have access to and no one will be um, disappointed. And as the library increases their capacity or services, um, they can change that. So that is initiating partnerships. And now we will talk about the programming workflow and um, Laura will speak to that. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, this presentation is really just a summary of the detailed programming workflow, which is located on our Ready Access website. So building on the partnerships that uh, Akila just highlighted, libraries will be provided a detailed programming workflow to encourage, inspire, and empower librarians to coordinate, promote, and evaluate programming to decarcerated individuals. Whether a librarian has experience or is new to programming, there are four things the programming workflow highlights. A central theme is building relationships. Building relational collateral, not only with decarcerated individuals, but also individuals affected by mass incarceration, such as their families, their friends, and the community. And of course, building relationships with the organizations that have already been serving this marginalized population. The workflow emphasizes the importance of getting input with the goal of nothing for them without them. This is really to ensure that we are meeting their educational, recreational, vocational, and cultural needs. The workflow provides librarians examples of goals that are both specific and measurable. We also provide librarians with an evaluation toolkit that provides a survey, examples of survey goals and questions, and a survey scale with measurable responses. The programming workflow um, includes a section specifically devoted to children and teen programming and the involvement of, ch of children and teen services librarians in program, in program planning to this often underrepresented and marginalized population is highly encouraged. Lastly, the programming workflow provides librarians other ways to help uh, one could be they could grow their collection by purchasing materials about the prison industrial complex and mass incarceration. We've provided a bibliography, which may be a great collection development tool, as well as just a general reading list to expand knowledge and empathy. We've also provided librarians um, a list of organizations who support books to prisoners where they could um, send their, their discards to. Next up in our presentation is an example uh, website template so libraries can easily plug and play, which Gregory will highlight for us now. Hello, uh, so this is our example website. Um, this comes with the branding color palette uh, for ready access coding. Um, the resource page will provide different ways to access resources and programs state and nationwide for the community. Um, a brief description um, of what the website consists of, explaining different types of resources that will help the community. 
Um, virtual attraction examples that explain the program and resources, resources such as online reentry, any resource, I'm sorry, any online statewide reentry, online nation reentry, a hotline, housing, food, work, and any other reentry resource. Um, the library information will be provided at the bottom um, with, ex with the address, phone number, email, or social media handles. Um, next, I'll go over the additional resources. Prisoners reentry is the process by prisoners who have been released, returned to the community. Many types of programs have been implemented with the goal and reducing recidivism and have been found to be effective for this purpose. On this page, you will find some of those resources. This resource page is is for those impacted by the incarcerate, incarceration, including friends, family, members of the community. Resource examples are California Reentry that comes with a video, Center of Employment Opportunities, Prisoners EDU, the California State University, 211, Reboot and Rebound. And then next up, we have Jenny with the additional resources with the reading list. We've created this list that begins with nonfiction and goes through history, memoirs, prison abolition, and a more general reference. And we've also included fiction, which is adult general through poetry and young adult. Now this is a living list. It'll be added to as, as the months go on. And it serves many purposes for collection development, professional development, and also as a, as a source for community enrichment and awareness. We also have a glossary of terms. Um, we found that there's a lot of, a lot of these terms are used indiscriminately and, and they're actually very specific. Things like jail, prison, parole, probation, um, felony, et cetera. So that concludes the tour of the toolkit and we will return to Aquila. So that's our toolkit, which is synonymous with the website. Um, we have, we're gonna put the, um, thank you, Laura. Laura put the website in the chat. So we're gonna ask that after this is all over, you guys click around, really look at it and examine the documents therein. Um, again, we're asking Greg, that uh, you and your team would invite us to the next director summit. We will be distributing this toolkit via Calix, um, but also we want ready access to be um, a household name in the minds of librarians comparable to that of lunch at the library. So we wanna thank you so much for allowing us to come together and create an initiative that will uh, can make a really good impact on this marginalized population as well as librarians. So thanks for letting us share and we're open to any feedback or questions now. <laughs>